Hey, what's going on guys? Pete here with MixBetterNow.com coming to you with a new video in our Mix 101 series and today we're going to be looking at how to use a Pultec style EQ. So let's jump on in and check it out. All right, so we have two instances of the uh, of the Pultec up on the screen here. We're inside of Studio One. We're working in the same uh, mix session that we've been uh, working in for this whole Mix 101 series. This is a limit from Matt McCalkin. And the two versions of the Pultec that I have up are the two most common models that you're going to see plug-in companies, um, you know, model. The one on the bottom is the EQP1A, and the one on the top here is uh, is the MEQ5, also known as the mid-range equalizer. And uh, I just want to just get this out of the way that this video is not about which plug-in company is better, which you know waves or UAD or any of that stuff. It's it has nothing to do with this. It's you use whatever you like, and uh, I, I'm just trying to really get down to you know the meat and potatoes of how this. EQ works and how you can use it to your advantage in your sessions. All right. So um, all that stuff out of the way. These EQs are passive equalizers. Okay. They have big old transformers on the back of them and they also uh, have tubes inside of them. So they have a really wonderfully harmonic, uh, harmonically, wonderfully harmonically. Too many, uh, what are those adverbs? Um, uh, too many of those in a row. Anyway, uh, uh, but they sound awesome is, is really my point. They have a, uh, a sound to them when you stick them on the channel and not do any EQ on them. They're going to sound a certain way. Uh, the old analog units would, would increase uh, the level. I believe it was 1.13, 1 dB they would add to the level, and the plugins are no different. Uh, you pop one of these on your channel, you're going to get a volume boost, but, but in a very pleasant way. Uh, so just bear that in mind. But what I'm going to do now is uh, we'll take a listen to what I got going on, then we'll look at some of the features, and then I'll show you what I like to use them on, uh, and we'll check them out. So right now, this is on the mix bus. I love using Pultex on the mix bus. Uh, we're using the EQP1A, which is right down here. And what I'm doing is I am boosting 4 dB of 20 hertz, okay? Then I'm attenuating or cutting. You know, attenuate is another word for cut. Um, I'm attenuating three and a half dB, which is called what I call the pull tech trick, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. And then I'm boosting one dB of 8K here on top, and I think it sounds great. So I'll hit play from the second verse. I'll pull it in and out so you can hear what it's doing, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll jump into the rest. All right, here we go. The walls won't give up any answers. The ceiling tells a tale. I burn too many holes into the past. I can't make out a single sound. I'm hanging on to the telephone. The more I say, the less I know. My is low, my head is high. And you just walk away. Well, you can take my heart to the limit. All right, so hopefully that you could hear from that. What I am doing is I am boosting the bottom end, strangely 20 hertz, I know. Uh, and then I'm cutting, like I said, three and a half dB. And what that's doing is that's that's tightening up and really enhancing my bottom end in a pleasant way. So uh, on the kick drum, on the bass guitar, and on all the other low end frequencies, it's really doing this, this sort of magic thing that only Pultex can do. Uh, more on that in a second. And then I was just adding a little bit of shine, 1 dB at AK, nothing uh, nothing major, all right? Uh, but now let's take a look at what all of these knobs and buttons do. So um, again, this is on the mix bus. Uh, I want to look at this as like sort of three sections here, okay? If we uh, cut this into triangles, here's one. So this boost attenuate and uh, this uh, low frequency knob is one area. This boost bandwidth and high frequency knob is another area. And then this attenuate and attenuation select knob is the third. So the idea here is we can boost and attenuate our low frequencies, 20, 30, 60, and 100 hertz. We can boost our high frequencies, 3K to 16K. Uh, and we can also control the bandwidth now. So our bandwidth is our Q. It's how wide or how uh, uh, peaked our, uh, our bell curve is. And then the attenuation knob up here pertains to these three frequencies, 5K, 10K, and 20K. 
So you can basically cut 5K, 10K, or 20K. And this interacts with these two guys here. So I could technically boost uh, 5K, and I could technically uh, cut 5K at the same time. I know it sounds crazy. I'll show you what that sounds like in a little bit. But that's a uh, you know that's essentially it for the uh, for the EQ. That's how it works. Uh, the boost knobs only boost. The attenuation knobs only cut. These uh these frequency knobs are dented, so you can only pick whatever uh you know frequencies you see that they point to, and uh, and the bandwidth is only applicable to this high frequency. All right. Now, I just want to show you the MEQ5 real quick because you're also going to see this. So if you have the Waves version, this is sort of built in. Um, I know other companies make this. Um, so again, three sections we're going to look at. Peak, okay? This is one. Dip, this is two. And then this other peak, this is three. This knob right here, boost only, okay? 200 to 1K. Uh, boost only. Uh, the dip in the middle is cut only. So this knob only cuts. And again, 200, all of these frequencies up to 7K. And then up top here, we have uh, some mid-range frequencies that we can boost. This knob is boost only, 1.5, 2, 3, 4, and 5K. Um, I don't like using the MEQ5 on my mix bus. I'll show you what that sounds like uh, when we check something else out. But that's really uh, um, you know, how these Poltex work. All right, so I'm going to get nerdy for a minute. And I just want to show you everything that I just explained. Uh, they kind of draw lines on it here in the manual. So as you can see, these are the three sections divvied up that I was referring to. So this is the EQP1A, and that's how they sort of want you to envision that with those lines. And then moving down to the MEQ5, these are the three sections that I just went over. All right. So now that we know all of that stuff, um, let's go check out what this sounds like on some other sound sources. All right, so we're gonna take a listen to the drums and on my drum level here, uh, we'll solo everything up. And I felt like on the drum bus here, it would be a great place to show you um, the um, sort of the pull tech method of where you can boost and cut at the same time. And I think you'll really be able to hear it here. Uh, it'll come out uh, quite a bit in the kick, and you'll also be able to hear the high end as well. Okay, so I'm going to do a version of boosting and attenuating on the bottom end. Let's listen. Now, I'm exaggerating this because I really want you to be able to hear what it's doing, okay? But when you bring up the bottom end, whether it's 20, 30, 60, uh, you're going to get a whole lot of uh, that low end girth happening. And that's one thing I love about Poltex is they sound great on kick drums. They sound great on drum buses because they're able to really bring out the bottom end. Okay, uh, 30 might be a little bit much. Let's go to 20 here. We'll do a 3 dB boost, uh, 2 of attenuation. If I come up to the high frequencies and I want to just add a little bit of shine to the cymbals, a little bit of crack to the snare, uh, I can put it on 16. That sounds really nice on the cymbals.
So there's a great uh, example of how you can use the Pultec on your drum bus, uh, as well as any other sound source, to really bring out some of the bottom end and to add some shine to the top. Uh, let's go take a look now at the MEQ5, where we can sort of dial in some cool mid-range on some guitars. All right, so last but not least, we're going to take a look at some guitars here. Uh, again, Pultec sound awesome on anything. It, for me, it's kind of like uh, it's like Sriracha or you know, like a ranch, I guess if you're not a hot, so uh, hot sauce person, uh, you could put it on anything, right? So if 1176s and LA2As are salt and pepper, then for me, Pultex are definitely, you know, a little bit of Tabasco sauce or hot sauce. Um, let's check out these two guitars. The main ones I have going on, I have a... Um, I have an Audio Technica 4040 and an AEA ribbon mic on the two main electrics. They sound like this. So we're uh, sending that out to some spring reverb via the amazing, amazing AKG uh, BX20 from UAD. Probably the best best spring reverb I've ever heard. We'll save that for another uh, another video. Anyway, uh, just doing a little bit of EQ, a little bit of compression with an LA3A, nothing serious. So now I want to do a little bit of boosting. I want to bring out a little bit of the mids, and I want to bring out a little bit of top end, something in like 10K. Uh, and the MEQ5 is wonderful for that. So check it out, right? Here's our peak down at the bottom. We can boost on these two outer bands, right? Peak, peak, and then dip is in the middle. So peak boosts, dip cuts. Uh, so, you know, for example, uh, if you wanted to find an area uh, in which you could actually scoop some uh, uh, some stuff out uh, subtractively, you know, uh, uh, 200 all the way to 1K is the same on the dip. So if we boosted 500... So for me, 700 there was sounding just a little bit nasally. Uh, we can come over here to 700 and then cut a little bit of it. Check it out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and boost a little bit of 1.5 here. I'll exaggerate it and then pull it back just so you could hear what it does. Okay, now I want to come down to the EQP 1A and I want to boost a little bit of 10K. Uh, we're going to have to use this one also because uh, we don't have enough uh, EQ bands on the, on the uh, MEQ5. And another thing I love about this is if you notice, I am literally diming out 10K right now. I am boosting 10 dB of 10K and it does not sound harsh. It does not sound sizzly. It doesn't sound any of that stuff. And that's just, that is such a signature, uh, uh, you know, tone stamp of the Pultec is that uh, nothing really gets harsh or kind of cruddy sounding. You can definitely overcook things, but it is a very, very forgiving EQ. Let's check it out in context. I know you know the difference between the colors and the sound. But I can't take it all, faith not every heaven can wait. Let's be done with the messing around. This is the limit. The walls won't give up any answers. Sounds great, all right? And there you have it. I mean, that's really uh, the nuts and bolts, the meat and potatoes uh, of the Pultec EQ. 
wonderful, wonderful EQ, uh, whether you're using the EQP1A or the MEQ5. I don't want you to think of them as being different. I want you to think of them as being the same thing. They're just sort of covering um, two different uh, areas on the EQ spectrum. One is focusing on the low end and the high end, and the other is focusing primarily on the mid range. So uh, they're fantastic. Check them out. Doesn't matter, you know, which companies, you know, you know, you, you buy them from or you demo them from. I think they're all great tools to have. They're very easy to use. And once you really understand how to harness the power of them, I think they can really go a long way in your mixes. All right, so that's it for me. My name is Pete with MixBetterNow.com. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Uh, this has been How to Use a Pultec EQ. Hope you all have an awesome day, and I will catch you next time. See ya.